Shall I tell you a story? I've been blessed with a rich motorcycling experience since I was 16. But in my early 20s, I ended up working in the toy shop, as some of you already know, and um, selling Hondas, Yamahas, BMWs, Triumph, amongst others. And it was exciting because we were part of a, a dealership that had racing heritage. Uh, the shop, of course, as some of you know, as I said, will be it was Alan Jeffries at Shipley. We had uh, David, who went on to become an Isle of Man legend. But prior to that, he was racing the short circuits. I knew him from when he was about 17. As he got a bit older and started progressing, we used to see him twice a week sometimes often in and out of the shop and he was always up to summer quite a, a useful mechanic certainly good with his engineering loved his trucks loved doing stuff now of course there was Uncle Nick who I learnt a lot from in my riding but prior to that of course the old man Alan who was the originator of the shop they used to sell Reliant when they first started, I think in three wheelers and all sorts, they went, then they went to Triumph Motorcycles. Um, and then his sons, obviously Nick I mentioned, and Tony, who was involved with the shop now, as, uh, I mean, I presume he's still a director, Louise's daughter, superstar. Um, so yeah, and I'm still in touch. Now I'm going to take you back to a story when, of course, them that know the history of the shop they might know of Tony unfortunately Tony uh, ended up in a, a wheelchair after a motorcycle racing accident I can't remember where it was Snurton or somewhere he basically broke his back in the days when they just dragged you off the track and unfortunately I think that might have been to his detriment ended up in a wheelchair there might, might have been a different outcome these days but um, luckily he's still with us and uh, must have been 20 years I think David had not been long born when this uh, this accident occurred so I don't think Dave ever knew Tony much out of the wheelchair and anyway going back to this I remember I can imagine being Tony being a racer he'd won a TT well experienced motorcyclist and lived it all his life suddenly found himself in a situation where he's not allowed to to ride or can't ride again one day we ended up getting a and I took it in as a trade-in from a chap in, who lived in Bailden. And I don't think we sold it new. I don't know where he got the bike, but we ended up taking a red 1200 Triumph Daytona and it was a 93 model 1200 Daytona. And we took it into the trade and I can't remember where it was. It was a lovely guy and I can't remember his name who traded it in. It doesn't matter. And because we are a Triumph dealer, we didn't have a 1200 as a demo. We had 900, which you'll see from, if you look at my Instagram, I had a yellow one, I've got a picture of me airborne at Balloff Bridge on it in 94 when I went out to watch Nick race the Britain, which I actually rode. How lucky was I? Um, even if it was just around a car park. Now, um, back to it, yeah, so Dave grabbed, got out of this bike. Now this bike was a, it was actually, it had actually been a bit of a test bed, the engine, for Triumph and they tuned it so it was quite a powerful bike for a Triumph 1200 Daytona which was a bit of an elephant I had an indicated 165 mile an hour out of it with my first wife on the back and she was just watching the sheep it was rock solid the bike was solid as it was an absolute animal I don't know what the horses were in it the ponies how many HPs but um, it was a quick bike Anyway, Dave took this bike because there was an opportunity for old school riders to go to somewhere. I can't remember if it was Cadwell or somewhere. There was a day for old bikers that raced in the past to go back and have a ride around the circuit as a big meeting. 
or at a meeting and Dave thought wouldn't it be ace if my dad could have a ride so what he did was snaffle that bike off us measured it up and put a linkage on what's this guy doing outside lane it's no good to me at all and what he did is created a linkage so he could go on the back and change gear for his dad on the front of this Triumph 1200 Daytona and uh, we hadn't even known the bike was gone he must have taken it away brought it back done some measurements taken it away brought some back brought it back done some measurements created this linkage next time he brought it back he goes Neil this is DJ he went Neil borrow you for half an hour oh, alright what are we up to he said we're off to take that for a spin I said well where are we going where are you taking me he said no no you're taking me I went alright <laughs> what are we doing here so he, I jumps on I mean, noticed this linkage, he said, I'm going to do the gears and we're off for the spin, we're going to test it out. What a hoot! The guy, obviously Dave, he's been riding two wheels since he was born. So, like any good motorcyclist, they've spent the first years on BMXs and he, he was a legend around building and the village for what he used to get up to. So he was a talented lad all his life. So put him on a motorbike, it was always going to be good. And he had the he had the he had the kahunas. He knew what he was doing. He could read the road. We all know what he went on to do. With good reason. He was good. He was bloody. Who was in talent? So we we, we set off. I'm on the front. I've got a clutch, a throttle, a back brake, and a front brake. And he read my mind. And we took it for a spin, probably for half an hour. We had such a laugh and we were giving it handfuls and he just got my gears, he got everything perfectly. He just knew exactly where I wanted to be, he was a good passenger. What a bloody laugh that was and uh, what a cool thing for him to do for his dad. And his dad obviously had to be lifted onto the bike. Dave on the back and Dave said he'd never been more frightened on a motorbike. <laughs> in his life can you imagine 25 20 odd years with a pent up frustration in the throttle wrist of somebody like Tony Jeffries who took his son on the bike for the first time in 20 odd years but never ridden with his son it would have been absolutely epic and that Dave did that for his dad and created this situation where he could ride it on a track it must have been bloody awesome I had some great times and that was one of the nicest things that I got involved with, with just being able to, it was nice that Dave tr trusted me to take him on the back and uh, take him for a spin, we just went on to Bingley, around the backs and back around over the tops of Cottingley, and back down through Shipley into, the, into back to town, it was just a, a splendid bit of fun. Dave was a good guy, I've got lots of stories, now did I mention I rode the Britain, this was after the 1994 TT and uh, that was one of them situations where bittersweet I mean Nick had won the, the, the what was called the Formula 1 the year before on Castrol Honda look at this guy and uh, for Castrol Honda let's go and, we, and it was uh, his return he'd been given a chance to ride the V1000 Britain uh, for John Britton in the 94 and that bike of course won Daytona didn't do well at the TT it wasn't tested but uh, an awesome beastie now we were lucky to have it in the store on display for uh, it must have been a good couple of months three months or so it was the blue and pink one it was actually the there's 10 bikes built officially the V1000 Britain this was number six of the build uh, numbered number seven because that was Nick's bike for the TT and um, there'll be some mis I might post a picture up if I can of Nick on it that my brother took took the photograph <laughs> but there was time every couple of weeks Nick would take it out on a Saturday of the showroom and they had that that starter it was just like a big solenoid thing in fact attached to a battery and the thing and it bring it on it just rub it up against the back wheel and get it spinning it would fire the thing up noisy as 
think he had a dry clutch. What an absolute noisy thing. And he says, fired it up just to make sure it was alive outside. And I used to push it out light as a feather. It was as light as my TZR 250 that I had. And uh, very, very slim if you sat on it. No lock. Probably moved about 15 mil either way. Didn't feel like it had any lock at all. And uh, <laughs> he goes, go on then ride it up and around car park. This was Nick. I sort of looked at him. I didn't, I didn't need asking twice, but he says, so if you drop it, I'll effing kill you. I didn't drop it, I'm still alive and uh, trust me, it, it was just like an on and off switch. I once, I once drove um, a 911 Porsche by turbo and that was an on and off switch with a clutch. It, was very, it just reminded me of that, there was just no middle ground, it was off. Honestly, the car park at the back of the shop was, wasn't big. But I count it as a ride, I went around the car park and I think it took me about three attempts to turn the freaking thing around with that little lock on it. But I'm one of a very few people that got to ride the Briton. Can't be many. I still count it as a ride even if it wasn't on a track. And uh, I think I got second gear. And that was it. But uh, no way will I ever forget that. It was just one of them moments. And I believe fully that he would have killed me if I'd have dropped it. <laughs> Interesting times.